Hello, hello. Hello, everyone. So this live is obviously going to be incredible and mind blowing. And it's probably going to strike a little bit of a chord with a lot of you. All right. It's probably going to hit a lot of you and say like, Ooh, I don't like what she's talking about, but that's why I'm here guys. I'm here to make you more money. And I'm here to do that by actually telling you what you need to do. Now, although you may think by um, doing all the things in your business, doing all the marketing things, and you're not hitting your income goal. And I'm going to talk about why you're not hitting your income goal, what the fuck it has to do with your mom, even though it probably has a lot to do with your mom, <laughs> um, standing up for what you truly desire, and then actually hitting your best month ever. So I'm going to first give you a little bit of what you have to do, how this plays, telling your mom to fuck off. Even though I didn't necessarily tell my mom to fuck off, I'll go into the story about how this happened. But what this has to do with you making more money, okay? So setting boundaries with your power. This is kind of the background to it. Setting boundaries with your power. When you are fully going after, whether it's that monthly income goal, whether it's the person you want to be, setting the boundaries with where you're going to allow your power to come from and who you're going to allow your power to be dictated by is so important to setting boundaries right now, okay? So my mom, just to give a little backstory, I bet a lot of us have moms that are super supportive. Hey, Sharon. Um, I bet a lot of us have moms that are super incredibly supportive of our businesses, right? Maybe they say things like, like, oh, you know, oh, this is amazing. I'm so proud of you. I'm so happy for the things you're doing and everything like that, right? Who here has a little bit of a complicated relationship with your mom? Just give me a little love sign on this Facebook Live because I definitely did. And if you are an ambitious, powerful woman, the relationships we have with our moms are super incredibly complicated, okay? So if you've ever seen the movie Lady Bird, Definitely check out that movie. I'm probably going to talk about it a little bit more. Hey, Stephanie, thank you so much. Um, but what happened was my mom has always been super supportive of me, super motivating, always cheering me on. But when I came to a point of definitely outgrowing where we came from as a family and where she came from as a person, that was when shit really started to hit the fan. When I really started to, to see my mom become incredibly uncomfortable about where I was going. So becoming this person, right, growing to the space she had never been in, confused her and also made her a little bit jealous, okay? So there was a lot of jealousy going on about, I don't know that space that Shannon's going into, right? So whether it's a new income goal, a new way of creating money, um, becoming a person who's becoming more powerful and wanting to go after things that, you know, she maybe desired but never expressed, my mom kind of became a little bit confused about that stuff. She didn't know how to control me. She didn't know how to help me. She didn't know. So she felt very frustrated. Did she also feel jealous? Yes, of course she did. She felt jealous of this new income goal I was creating, of this new business that I had, um, how I was able to you know, sit at home and make money, right? But when you allow your mom to say certain digs and certain things that limit you, okay, like the story I'm going to go into, the coach store story, that is what's actually going to translate into limiting your income, okay? Because you're allowing, now it might not be your mom, it might be someone else in your life who you are allowing their little digs every single day to get to you, okay? And when you do that and you allow those digs, maybe it's not every day, maybe it's once a week, you allow those, just those little comments, you know those comments I'm talking about, right? Of, you know, you shouldn't work so much. How can you be like a good mom? I get this with a lot of my clients, I'm not a mom. But a lot of my clients say, how can you be a good mom and have this business, right? I hear a lot of those things. I hear a lot of those things of um, you're working too much. I hear that a lot. Um, I hear things about you really shouldn't be like that online. You really shouldn't say those things online. Um, you really shouldn't say those types of things because people won't like you for that. Um, I've heard those before. I've also heard things about, you know, um, don't go after that much money. It's kind of too greedy. You know, why do you have to be so greedy? Why do you have to want all this money? Um, just those little digs, right? If you've heard those little digs before, you know what I'm talking about. So those little digs that come in, whether they come in weekly or daily or taking away from your energy, and then you are literally just operating from a place of like, right, I am greedy. I am working too much. I can't be a good mom and own a business. And all of those things then start to play in. Okay. 
So I wanted to tell you guys about the coach story. Okay, so I wanted to go into the coach store with, I was with my mom and my sister and we were shopping around Christmas time. My biggest month that came is in February, the first week of February. January, I still did pretty good. Uh, first week of February, I did amazing. But, so we went to the coach store. We were, it was around Christmas time, probably after Christmas. And we were at a whole bunch of these, it was an outlet store. It wasn't even the legit real coach store, okay? So it was the outlet store. And I said, oh, I'm gonna go into the coach store. And my mom did not like this at all. My mom did not like that I wanted to go into the coach store. So she came at me with her things of feeling uncomfortable. She said, Shannon, you're too fancy. Um, I don't know who you've become. We used to make fun of people that bought coach bags because we thought it was ridiculous that they spent that amount of money on a bag. Um, I don't like who you've become. Where is my daughter? Where is my old daughter who I used to like laugh and have fun with? Um, uh, why can't like... Why can't you just buy like a regular purse? These purses are so expensive. Uh, it seems kind of dumb for you to spend that much money on a purse, right? So who else has heard of these things before uh, from your parents saying, we think it's dumb that you're spending your money here, right? So as my mom is saying these things, she's saying these things as I am walking full on into the coach store. Like I am like, you know what, mom? You can wait outside. And that was the first, first, first time in my life when my mom has said something, like when my mom has dug at me before about wanting to have a different life and things like that, they would be subtle digs and I would just ignore them. I would just be like, okay, all right, mom. Well, like that's your opinion. You know, you can have that opinion. No, you can't fucking have that opinion. <laughs> no, you can't because that shit is creeping in on my life, right? So for the first time in my life, I stood up to my mom and I said, you know what, mom? I'm going into the coach store. I would like a coach bag. They are nice, good, genuine bags, and that's why they're expensive. They will last me a long time instead of buying a piece of shit $10 bag from like whatever store, right? Even buying like a bag that's like $50 won't last me as long as a coach bag will. And I really want a coach bag. So you can either just hang out outside until I'm done, or you can come in the store with me. And I was like, I was literally like like peeing my pants. Like yes, this is what's happening. As I was telling my mom, you can either hop on board with me in my vision of my life or you can get the fuck off. Because this is where I'm going, right? I am going to become this woman who has these firm boundaries with people. If you're not on board with the vision of my life, you know, either you can stop criticizing me, right? And watch me rise or get off. If you just want to criticize me the entire time, get off my train get off my ride, right? Because I can't have you here. I have enough internal battles happening every single day in my own head, right? That I don't need to take on your beliefs and your ideas, right? So as I'm standing there and I'm telling my mom to like literally like fuck off, which I have never done in my life because we must, we must be so respectful to our parents and so grateful for everything that they do doesn't mean I'm not grateful. I have expressed gratitude for my mom for everything she has done as a single mother, and I appreciate her. But this is the place I need to go to in my life. And if you're not on board with that, and if you want to tear me down and you don't like that vision, that's okay, but get out then. Like, I can't have you in my life then. And that's it. And that's so, that is the hardest, hardest thing. I mean, your own, to tell your own mother, either get on board with my vision or get off because I can't have you in my life doing this, right? That was the hardest, hardest thing I have ever done in my entire, entire life, okay? So what is standing up to your mom? What is standing up to someone who is not on board with the vision for your life? Whether the vision for your life is to travel around the world and make money from your laptop, whether the vision of your life is to buy coach bags, whether the vision of your life is to have six children, you know, whatever it is for you, right? And you know that this is your purpose and your passion and your vision and other people aren't on board with it, you know, and they just want to jab at you and jab at you for that vision and for that purpose. You have to tell them, get the fuck off. Like, I can't, I can't bring you on my train to my destination because you're not going to help me get there, right? And so once you do that, once you stand up to whoever you feel like is holding you back from that vision in some way, what happens is all of a sudden you immediately rise to a feeling of power and confidence you have never felt before in your life. And when you show up as that person, 
as that person who says, oh, it feels really good to tell people who are not on board with my vision to get out. When you rise to that vision and you become that person, it's all of a sudden clients and people on social media start responding like that like that guys no joke so here I was telling my mom to like fuck off right <laughs> the second week of December she did go into the coach store with me yes she did and then me and my mom have had a conversation last week about that whole incident and my mom said to me I can't believe what you're doing what you're doing is what I have always wanted to do with my life so not only it didn't ruin my relationship with my mother it actually made my relationship with her completely, totally, 110% better. But then also I went on to have an $8,000 day because I showed up from a completely powerful, confident place. Okay. And then what else did it create? It created, I wrote a post recently that has over 500 comments on it. Over 500 people commenting on a Facebook post because I set those boundaries, right? I set those boundaries. If you're not on board with my vision, get off. <laughs> if you're not here and you're not going to support me, right? It doesn't mean I don't take constructive criticism. Of course I do, right? I, I have to be open to that. I'm not going to let my ego run the show. I'm going to always be open to people telling me, you know, well, maybe like this could be different and that could be different. Cool. I'll decide whether it's useful or it's not. But what I'm saying now is you can't talk to me like that. You can't talk to me like that. You can't tell me that my vision is wrong. You can't tell me that I'm greedy. This is what I want for my life. And now you can start embracing that in so many simple ways today. For example, let's say you go to a restaurant or you go to Starbucks and they give you a cup of coffee and it's the wrong fucking cup of coffee or it's the wrong order, right? How many of us are always like, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> like, I'll just take that drink, right? Or I'll just eat the meal. Oh, it's okay. It's wrong, but I'll just eat it anyways, right? That simple act of saying no this is what I want, telling the waiter, telling the barista, telling whoever, no, this is what I ordered, this is what I want. That simple act you can do today to start stepping into your boundaries and your power, right? Or telling your husband if you're always the person who's like, oh, I don't care, I don't care what we do, saying no, no, honey, I want the Chinese food instead of this food, right? Like that simple act is also setting the boundaries and setting you up for making more money. Um, so listen, so if at any time you're doing this and, and you without a doubt stand in this, stand in your power, tell people what you want, not just telling your mastermind friends, not just telling people who are within your Facebook group or whatever, telling everyone in your life, especially the people that you love, of the vision you have for your life and where you're going. And if they don't like it, if they start tearing you down and criticizing your vision and saying it's not possible, it is your job to then stand in your power and say, hey, if you're not on board with this vision, you can get the fuck off. Like, I'm going there, whether you come with me or not, but this is what I have to do, right? And watch how people respond. You will watch either relationships that will rise and be so much better, or you will watch friendships and relationships that fall that weren't lifting you up in the first place. And it is safe for you guys to have changing relationships, okay? I was really, really scared of having relationships and friendships change, but it is safe for you to do that. You have to do that in order to hit your monthly income goal. All right, guys, so that's what I got for you today. If you haven't grabbed my webinar presentation of how I made my monthly income in one day, three simple shifts I did, including all of this relationship healing and relationship work, um, I'll send you a link right after I finish the video because I don't have the link with me. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. Bye.